All right, so welcome back here. Part five in our single-ended tube amplifier build. Excited about this one, but you may be wondering, hey, we're five videos into this thing, and you have not built anything yet. I've, I've, I've watched this series. I wanted to learn how to build an amplifier. Well, let me bring you to the real world of electronics uh, design and build. Three-fourths or more of your time will actually be spent... Um, you know, picking out a schematic, doing your research on it, figuring out what worked well, what didn't. Maybe, um, or if you're actually designing the amplifier from scratch, you know, doing running test simulations, etc., um, and doing circuit analysis. Um, but once you got a schematic picked out, like you've seen here, we got to make this thing practical. So, you know, which power transformer, which uh, output transformers. Um, what kind of chassis will I put this thing in? Uh, a lot of considerations to be had as you've, as you've learned thus far. And so the real world is when you go to build an amplifier, you will spend the majority of your time um, in what I would call the design and engineering phases, um, more so than the build phase. The, the build and tweaking phase will take up about a third of your time um, in reality. So that's what you're seeing play out here. Um, and if you came along and you said, hey, I want to I want to watch this uh, want to watch this video, learn how to build something. You're feeling like you're missing something because we haven't built it yet. Well, it's just kind of the way it goes. Um, so this is an old adage I have loved my entire life. My dad was in uh, housing construction uh, pretty much his whole life. And so, um, you know, I learned this thing of measure twice, cut once many years ago. You can see here that it didn't measure the sun too well and it didn't work out well. And somebody else here said, but cutting is more fun than measuring. Well, I'll agree, as long as your N and G fits inside your amplifier chassis. Um, it's just kind of like, um, you know, these uh, these uh, MKP capacitors I'm looking at. I'm looking at this chassis going, hmm, either I need to get a bigger chassis or maybe I need to go with electrolytics. Um, but this is the stuff you figure out along the way when you're... Uh, when you're designing uh, and putting an amplifier together. So now let's jump over to Bench and check out what these components actually look like. Okay, over here on the bench, this is uh, the Ed Core in the box they come in. Nice little uh, packaging, but um, you can see here when you actually get the transformer, this is what it ends up looking like. Um, nice, neat little package. I like how it lays down. Um, you know, if this was the chassis right here, these things are not very tall. Uh, nice little low profile design. I like that. You can see here 15 watt, 5,000 ohms, uh, and then it kind of gives you the breakout 8 ohms on the secondary. I thought this was interesting though to show you. These are the uh, Transcender TT312 OTs. So this is a 5K uh, primary 8 ohm secondary at 10 watts. Okay, I want you to kind of check this out. <laughs> um, if you can see the difference here, um, you know, this this transcender transformer is uh, significantly larger um, in size and the uh, the iron used than this. And this is a 10 watt transformer. And this is a 15 watt transformer. So uh, just showing you why I really liked. I think these uh, transcenders were way over designed and built, and they're just great transformers. Unfortunately, right now these guys are um, not taking any orders, not building anything right now. So uh, this may be what you end up having to go with. Um, but still, nonetheless, great little transformer. You could also step up from this to some of the others I showed earlier in the video set. This is that um, the Hammond. Um, otherwise, uh, you buy it through Allied um, 6K7VG. Uh, pretty decent transformer and it would mount on top so you would end up probably mounting this sideways like this and you would end up with these uh, these two kind of laid in this direction that way you've got the uh, magnetic field from the output transformers going this way and you've got the magnetic field from the uh, power transformer going that way so that give you a feel for how it would be laid out actually on the uh, on the amplifier chassis Speaking of the chassis, I love the way Hammond packages these things. They come in a, uh, um, you know, what they've done is they've covered the entire, pretty much all the amplifier in this plastic, white plastic. So it's really good for drawing on, uh, for then drilling, whatnot, but pretty sturdy little chassis. Like I say, you would, might would end up with something like that there, and then that mounted there, and 
and kind of like maybe that mounted right there at the end of the day on the back of this chassis and then end up with your tubes here on the front front part of this so uh, just give you a sense of that um, I wish that they made these out of one grade thicker uh, one gauge thicker metal but they don't um, up next this is the um, uh, magnetic components uh, classic, classic tone um, transformer I would end up having to take this top cap off right here because this is uh, sprayed on there or silk screened on and I would end up painting this uh, bell, bell cap here on the end but if you'll notice how this thing has to mount you have to cut a hole the size of this uh, this bottom piece here into your chassis and then this thing drops down in it just like that and then you would end up with your output transformers on each side of it but if you'll notice here you've got your magnetic field going in this direction with these output transformers and then here check this out your your whole plane so not only have you changed orientation but you're also in a completely different plane here because this thing's not standing up this way or this way it's actually laying down and I really like this design however this was about forty dollars more um, forty to fifty dollars more than this thing was so uh, you can you can take your path both will work just fine I promise you um, we've got the um, 258 uh, 158M 10 Henry um, chokes right here 100 milliamp each and the way these are going to end up mounting is on the inside of this chassis they will end up mounting here like this um, along the inside wall just like that so uh, in other words it's tucked down in here and I guess I could cut that open and show you but um, you know mounted on the inside of the chassis frame like that um, kind of sideways and uh, out of the way you won't see those above board or you could spray paint these um, you know strip this off spray paint them black mount them above board if you wanted to Okay, here we have the uh, MKP capacitors, um, the fast solenes. This is 33 microfarad. You're going to have to have three of those underneath this thing. Um, as you can see my hand here, these things are uh, <laughs> pretty good size uh, laid out here. And um, you're going to have to have two of these 22 microfarad uh, MKPs. And you're going to have to have two of these 10 MKPs. Now, I want you to look at how big that is. Um, I mean, this is the entire amplifier chassis, and then you're going to have to, underneath this thing, along with all the tube sockets and wiring and uh, power cords, etc. Um, don't forget, you got two of these underneath here too, um, hidden underneath the chassis. Um, you're going to have a good. <laughs> You have a hard time finding space for these things, to be honest, in this size chassis. So one thing you could do is jump to a bigger chassis, right? But then you get into a really big amplifier. Um, however, we're going to play around with it on the bench and see how these things perform. Maybe it's worth doing. Um, let me give you a comparative, though. I'm going to lay all these out over here for you. So you've got... That is your stack of uh, MK peak capacitors. This is why most people don't go this route, okay? I'm just going to lay this out here for you. Okay. That is the equivalent in electrolytic capacitors. These are uh, 33 microfarads at 450 volts. These are 22 microfarads at 450 volts. And these are 10 microfarads at 400 and or actually 400 volts on that. Um, but yeah, so you see the size space considerations. It's not that this won't work. Um, this is what most people go with just because of size and space. At the end of the day, I may even end up going here. And you could, um, if you wanted to, replace those um, with one of these. This is a multi section 32, 32 at 500. Um, and you can use a nice little mount. Sometimes people drill holes in their chassis and You'll see these things sticking up above the chassis like this um, Then they use a mount like this underneath below um, But that's a multi-section. It's actually got two 32 microfarads and whether you use 32 or 30 It's really not going to make that much difference, but uh, you get the sense of what I'm saying here as it relates to uh, size considerations 
maybe at the end of the day this is slightly better. Is it really worth um, the complexity you add by trying to stuff that into said chassis? And you're going to have two 807 tubes. These just happen to be some new old stock um, RCA tubes here that I have. And I remember back in the day you could pick these up for a dollar or two dollars a piece. Um, new old stock all day long at Hamfest. Now they've gotten a little bit uh, tougher. You'll end up paying five or ten dollars for one that's new old stock typically. Um, and then these are the tube sockets that I uh, showed you online and the, you'll see here they've got a key here. This, this little pin here is, goes over here into this socket and so there's only one way to plug these in and uh, they'll end up mounting nice like that. These are the plate cap. Uh, notice your wire will go in here. It will get soldered into that piece and then ultimately that thing locks down on top of the tube like that and you'll feed that little wire down then through the chassis through probably use a rubber grommet for that but um, you'll see how that pans out. Let's see here. Uh, so these out of the way. Up next uh, typical 6SN7 tube and this, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. This is just a uh, Sylvania what they call chrome top. Um, if you notice the getter flash on these things really big and deep. It goes you know, all the way down to here and for that name these got flagged the uh, 6S, uh, the Sylvania chrome tops. This is 6SN7 GTA. Um, you use the GTB, doesn't really matter. Um, found this interesting. I, I've got a few thousand 6SN7s that I've picked up over the years. A lot of new old stock ones. Um, but I, some of that, I thought it was neat that they used to package them and ship them in these little uh, cardboard tubes. This one uh, says uh, March 16th, 1956. And if I push the tube out, it might be the first time this tube's ever been out of this uh, little tube. It's, uh, it's a UTS, so that's a uh, uh, Navy. Um, Jan Corp 6SN7 GT VT231 made by Raytheon. So uh, that'd be a good new tube we could use in this thing. And like I say, 6SN7s are kind of a dime a, dove, dime a dozen these days. Um, or you might want to consider stepping up. Uh, this is a, a new, new old stock here, uh, 5692. I got lucky and got a lot of these years ago before the prices on them went crazy. And I doubt this one's ever been out of the box. Um, but these um, really strong rods on the inside here, uh, they were known for low microphonics. So these things could be used maybe in a helicopter or something where there's a lot of vibration. And because of the sturdy mounts inside, it's really not playing with the physical aspects of the tube. Uh, a lot of guitar guys like these because you you know you don't you don't end up with uh, microphonics. And it looks like this one was. Uh, the uh, not exactly sure when this one was made for 1955 so uh, yeah um, lots of options on the 6s and 7s you could roll with on your 5u4 this is just a sylvania new old stock 5u4 gb uh, the gb specs are a little better than just the uh, 5u4 g's or 5u4s um, but any of them will work in this amplifier to be honest um, I may I may try this one out some. You can see it's got the long cylindrical shape. This is what they call the ST shape. Um, it's uh, kind of or otherwise known as Coke bottle. Um, but this is an old tongue sole, and it is a uh, what does it say? Five U four G on top of it. Um, we could try that one in there as well on the bench and see uh, see how it does. One thing I, may, I failed to mention earlier. Um, these Edcore transformers, when you buy them, they come with these blue end bells. And you could take the cover, the screws out of this, pull these two end caps off, sand them down, paint them, or take them to a powder coat shop. They would uh, sandblast them or media blast them, get the paint off, and then you could paint them. Edcore also sells these. Uh, they're about $4 for a pair, I think it is. Um, and basically it's a replacement end bells for these things. So anytime I order Edcore Transformer, I always order new end bells and I'll paint them whatever color I want um, to match the aesthetics of the amplifier. And then I'll pull these off and I'll have these spare for next time. Um, all right, these are those um, 25 watt 390 ohm um, resistors. If you notice, they mount down to a chassis. Um, so good, good heat dissipation here, and uh, these will end up being uh, cathode resistors on uh, two of those tubes. These are the, um, and I just happen to have these from years ago. Um, I got a hundred of them, 75 volt um, um, 
zener diodes and these are um, 100 volt um, zener diodes at 1.5 watts. These are 1 watt and these are 1.5 watts. But that'll make up exactly what I need uh, to get to the 250 volt. I was at a ham fest years ago and a guy was there and he happened to have bought out somebody's electronics shop um, and he just had bins and bins and bins of parts and I think I bought um, a couple hundred of these. They're uh, the uh, 30, 30 millimeter um, fuse holders. So I've got a bunch of those but I can tell you where to order those from. By the way, I'm not really interested in selling my parts. Um, I, a lot of times I post stuff and people will be like, hey, could you sell me a couple of those inner diodes? Well, it's, if I sell these to you, then I need them tomorrow, then I have to turn around and end up buying something. So uh, I'll just pass along to you where you can get them. These are small little 3mm um, um, blue LEDs. They'll glow on uh, bright blue. And um, I've also got here those little holders that I was talking about, uh, bezels at the end of the day. You can see that the little 3mm LED will come from behind and uh, stick through the chassis just a little bit. A little bit of aesthetics, just so you know the amp's on. And in my case, it'll give it a nice um, blue glow. These are, um, I don't have, I've, I've not gotten in the uh, the um, Audio Note uh, 100K pot chip because I was gonna wait till I ordered all those uh, Kwame resistors. But this is an older blue uh, velvet uh, Alps 100K. And if you notice, it's got two sections at 100K, and as you turn this, it kind of sweeps. Um, and this is uh, audio logarithmic. But the reason it's got two is then you got your left channel and your right channel built into one volume knob here. Um, I could use these on this amplifier, but I'm going to try those audio notes just because these are getting harder to find, and half of them that are out there these days are, uh, like I said, kind of Chinese uh, knockoffs. These are, uh, this is the IEC control, uh, connector that uh, I was mentioning, and I gave you the um, where to get that from Mauser. Yeah, you know, your IEC cord just like goes to a computer or whatnot. If you have a hard time finding a, com a cord for that, just go to your local Goodwill and go to their little cord section, and you'll find one for a dollar or whatever. And uh, these work out well. You just end up having to cut a hole, and I'll, when we get into the layout in the chassis, I'll give you the specifications on what you've got to cut out. These are the little rocker switches, so you end up doing a... Uh, three-quarter inch hole and you put a slight little notch on one side right here for this key it's kind of hard to see but there's a key on one side and then uh, this thing kind of snaps down inside that hole and these little wings right here snap it in but then you have a nice little on off power switch I like that and let's see what else I've got to show you all right here we go um, these are those um, I was showing you earlier the uh, CMC Connectors. These things are just super nice at the end of the day. I mean, let's see if I can get one of these out. Packaging is tough. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, as you can see here, nice silver plated uh, connectors on the back. Really strong. Um, I don't know. I just I think they're very well made. But keep in mind, these things were not cheap. Uh, that bag right there is probably $100 or more. Um, but if you're in it for the uh, love of the game, um, sometimes you use good stuff there. And likewise here, we've got the uh, RCA jacks. And you've probably seen these used on high-end amplifiers before. But uh, if you'll notice here, all silver-plated, um, nice little uh, brushed metal. Um, connections. I mean, super well made, and those would be your RCA jacks on the output. Like I said, you can go with something a whole lot cheaper um, if you wanted to. Let me let me give you an example of that. All right, you could get um, you can go on the back of your amplifier with just uh, typical little banana jack connectors like these. You can pick these things up for like a dollar a piece, um, or maybe even less in quantity. Um, or you could go kind of here stand alone like these aren't bound together if you notice these had some plastic pieces here kind of binding them together you could go kind of discreet and not be bound together um, and uh, you know, get you a black one and, uh, and a red one and kind of keep those separate you could go with um, standalone uh, these here are pretty cheap you can get these less than a dollar a piece um, off eBay just little gold plated um, little 
RCA jacks like that. You'd save a lot of money over the uh, the others if you wanted to. And there again, um, kind of go with that. I've got a whole bunch of black ones here as well. Um, you could go with um, these are a little higher in, but they're not quite. Um, they look a lot like these, but they're not uh, silver plated like these are. These are. Uh, uh, lower end. These probably end up costing you for a pair like two or three bucks. Um, and you'd, you'd need some uh, a black one and a red one there. Um, so you get you get the idea of some options you would have to go with here as it relates to RCA and uh, banana jacks for the back of your speaker connections and your inputs. And last but not least, I mentioned you're going to want some uh, terminal strips. Basically, these things go and mount down in your amplifier chassis like such and then it gives you a nice place to uh, tag wires off to or let's say you need to run a wire to one thing and then a capacitor or resistor off the other side and it could give you a nice place to like if you wanted to mount these capacitors um, you could mount a couple of them in parallel here on this board and then feed off of this to wherever you need to go in the chassis and you can get at these in different shapes different quantities um, and like I said I'll end up I had these I had a whole pile of them but um, you know, you'll end up having to having to order some of these, and then the this is a little chassis tag, um, in other words, ground tag. So you'd take this thing somewhere along in here, and you'd bend it up like this, and you'd mount this down to the chassis um, like such, and then this would give you a ground point. So you'd scrape the chassis off real good, mount this down, and then you would uh, end up using. Um, right here you that'll give you a good ground point on your uh, amplifier all right well we'll make this the last and wrap this thing up but a lot of people just go down to their local hardware store and get these silver um, kind of slotted button head screws when they're putting stuff together and while it while it works just fine I, personally the stuff I've built that's really really turned out well at the end of the day, I end up using, and I think I've shown this in some of my other videos before, I end up using these black uh, stainless button head screws that have a hex screw on them. And I almost always uh, coincide that with um, these stainless K-locks. So the lock washer is built onto the back of the nut here, as you can see, and these things uh, screw in. And uh, at the end of the day, so I'll give you an example. That right there would be perfect for mounting a chassis uh, transformer down on a chassis. They just end up, your amplifier looks so much cleaner with these black screws than the, than the chrome ones. But maybe it's just a personal aesthetics thing. Um, I got them in all shapes and sizes. Um, matter of fact, like these right here, I like to use these. And I'll pull out the bolts and a transformer here and uh, measure and get the right size bolts and I'll replace these uh, silver bolts with the uh, the black ones and uh, in the build and it just ends up looking looking great I think these here actually fit perfectly for the uh, wider transcender transformers is the reason I had ordered these before but you can see you got a multitude of sizes and shapes and this button head um, I mean the nutty company here you can find these on eBay or they sell them direct I mean, you'll end up spending, you know, five or seven dollars for a little bag of screws and another five or seven dollars for for nuts. But at the end of the day, I just personally, I think it's worth it. At, uh, all these these might be the right ones here for the Ed Core. Um, I just think it's worth it. it. It brings a huge aspect of aesthetics to this thing that I like. But maybe that's just me. Hey, thanks everybody for staying tuned through all this. We were having a lot of fun here getting the parts and components laid out. I'm going to dive into getting this thing built here on the bench, and uh, uh, let me show you one thing about that. Okay, I'll use these on the bench here for testing, but I will not actually use them in the final amplifier. What these are, um, it's tube sockets, so like um, this tube here would plug into it. I could have it here on the bench, and then you can run wires out of these little connectors here on the sides for bench testing. Um, I got quite a few of these. Unfortunately, um, you know, we'll have we'll have the two 807s in this thing, and the company that makes these does not make 807 um, 
I mean, uh, the five pin based um, things. I've, I've emailed them and said, hey, I wish you would. Um, but anyway, the good news about the, uh, the five pin, you can actually get to and solder um, around it like this. So I'll end up soldering some wires to these things with leads to use on the bench here. Um, whereas the 807 sockets, and I never did show you the 807 sockets. I gotta find those. Um, we'll, we'll show them to you when we get to the build. But um, fortunately, I can use that here on the bench. And uh, and by the way, this is gonna be my um, my be bench board here that I've got. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, I think I cut this thing at the end of the day, 15 by 11 and a quarter. Um, so actually I'll end up building the bench on uh, the thing. So I'll actually use some screws to hold these down. I'll probably do the same. I'll put some screws in these things to hold them down. Because what you don't want when you're building this thing is these things to be moving around. Next thing you know your finger touches something and you get 450 volt uh, ride out of that. Um, <laughs> so uh, this will be my test board we're going to dive into next. So. Stay tuned, everybody. I know this is probably a long one, but uh, well worth it. Uh, hopefully you got to see all the parts in the bill of materials, and hopefully you got to see what they kind of look like here in real world. What I didn't show you were a few things like the fuses and the resistors. I'm sure you can get a sense for what they look like, but uh, you'll see it as we get into building this thing. Stay tuned, everybody, and uh, we'll be back hopefully in a week or two with uh, the next uh, next chapter in this journey. Thanks.